Hello, 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 and welcome to another unadorned edition of Game Guru Twitch Broadcasts. I think it's number nine. I'm just studying my statistics and I'm getting quite a few dropped frames out here in the middle of nowhere, broadcasting tiny little bits of internet, one packet a second. So I just want to make sure that we're getting um, the audio through. I think the visual isn't as important, I just hope the audio isn't too choppy. So I'm just going to ask if anybody can actually hear this, that they can say yay in the message box. And if they can, we can proceed. And I'm just going to twiddle my thumbs until I get a yay. It would be great. I'm also going to type some text message as well, just to test the text. Okay, I've just received some messages. It's probably a time delay of about 15 seconds. At least that's the normal time delay. But actually the uh, time delay looks like it's about one minute long. So this is going to be a very interesting broadcast with a very slow time warp. Anyway, I shall retreat back to the subject, which is talking about FPE files. Why FPE files? Well... We have a forum thread which talks about what you would like me to talk about in these Twitch broadcasts. And two separate people, both separately specified, they want to know more about the FPE files. So we're going to start with that. The first thing I'm going to do is show you exactly what an FPE file is and what it does. So what I'm going to do is switch over to a place where the FPE files live. And so if I click on this one you'll actually see a folder uh, which is the root folder we call this the game guru root folder uh, in which all the files that make a game guru what it is live and the location of all the FPE files is in the files folder naturally and then entity bank and then inside entity bank is all the different folders now if you were using a game guru these would actually be the entities that you'd pick to drop items into your game. So to demonstrate that, I'm going to switch over to GameGuru itself and I'll show you the same directory structure but available through this feature here, Add New Entities. So I can select Add New Entities and we have barrels, boxes and so on all the way down the line. So you can see barrels, boxes, bridges, buildings and all the rest of it. So for example barrel explosive we can select that press OK and we can drop many instances of this down into the game. So that's how that works you see those are the what we call entities and if we switch back to the files folder you can see the same directory structure you actually have barrels, boxes, so on and so forth and for example inside characters the subfolders as well as the FPEs in that particular route. So as you saw we saw we selected it's a barrel explosive barrel if we look across we can see these not very easy to see them as thumbnails so I'm just going to switch it over to detail it's a bit better so you can see these files here there's three you've got a barrel explosive bit uh, uh, bin then barrel explosive BMP and then barrel explosive FPE so the idea is that this is a temporary file don't worry about that the BMP is the image the uh, the little picture that you see when you actually browse through all the different objects then the FPE is a description of what the entity is and how it should behave within the game so if we open up this FPE 
And for that, I'm going to switch over to my notepad, which I've prepared for you. So you should be able to see that full screen. So I try to get you a nice quality text on screen, which is why I've got a separate window for it. And you can see it's pretty self-explanatory if you're familiar with it, but maybe you need an introduction to what all these fields mean. And the purpose of this broadcast is to go through these fields to tell you what each one does, the options you can put inside them, the effect they will have on the game, and so on and so forth. But before I do that, I just want to switch back to my uh, broadcast statistics. I just want to make sure that it's actually coming through okay. Uh, I'm just checking out the messages. Don't seem to be any complaints. So I'm going to assume <laughs> I'm going to assume that you could all hear me fine. In fact, no, I'm not going to assume that. I'm actually going to post a little question mark that uh, is everyone um, still hearing me talk about FBE. And I'll leave that question floating about whilst I carry on with this. So we start at the top. Um, you'll notice a little uh, semicolon which is this, and then some text. In the FPE file, the semicolon denotes a comment. So you can put a semicolon in this file, then anything after it's completely ignored by the product. You know, it will ignore it. It'll just pass past it. So this is used for just a general description of what fields are below. So we have a header, which says, you know, we just want um, to pull the header information. And there's only one field for this. It's called desk, D-E-S-C. Uh, which is the name of the entity. So when you drag that entity into the game world, it will be called whatever this is. In this case, it's barrel, bracket, explosive, close bracket. The next one, which is semicolon visual info, has three fields. Um, this, also, the comments... Um, are not grouping these fields in any way. You could actually get rid of all the comments and just lump all the fields into one great big list and it would also work. The comments just make it a lot easier to read through an FPE file. So we've got textured effect and cast shadow all grouped into the visual info because they really relate to uh, the visual properties of the entity. Textured. It's actually a, uh, uh, it's a nice word, but actually it's actually two words. It's texture D, as in texture diffuse. And you'd also have other fields like texture N, texture S. But we're just going to focus on this one field, texture D. Equals, and then a file. Now you've noticed um, we have the FPE when we looked at the files, but there wasn't any associated files with it. It was just the bin, the BMP, and the F FPE. Whereas this allows you to associate more files, things like textures and shaders and models, but we'll get to that a little bit later. So you've got barrel explosive underscore d dot dds. Now you will find that is not got a folder, so it must be relative to the FPE file. That is, it's in the same place as the FPE file. So we should find that if we go back to our files, you'll be able to see this. So remember, Barrel, spelt wrong, underscore explosive, underscore d dot dds. So let's see if we can find that in the files one, which means we'll switch over to files. And then once we're in the files folder, we should be able to scroll down, and there it is, barrel, underscore explosive, underscore d. So that's the texture file. And whilst we're here, look, you've got barrel dot x, so that's the geometry. So that's not the texture, that's the sort of the shape of the object. And there was also a shader, but you'll find the shader is in another location. If you actually go to Effect Bank Reloaded, you'll actually see all these FX files are actually shaders. But as we're focusing on FPEs right now, we'll probably leave that for another broadcast. So we go back to Barrels, um, which is FPE. Let's switch back to our notepad so we can actually continue and you can probably see where the other files are right now um okay so let's carry on with that so cast shadows please ignore that right now you can set that to any value you want it won't 
occur it will skip over it but eventually you'll be able to use this to define the kind of shadow this entity will cast but we only have one kind right well we have two we have static and dynamic but anyone familiar with the previous broadcast will know the options available there you don't really need to exclude entities at this stage from that process it's all done automatically for you to make it a little bit easier the next comment orientation you actually have model so that again specifies the geometry so that's just model equals barrel dot x very easy to pick up on that we saw that file earlier now we get to some interesting things and some changes that have been made since this fpe file structure was created number one there's no such thing as offset x y and z anymore those things are gone the reason is we had some conflicts in how the physics system was taking entities, wrapping them up in a collision shape, and then having them work properly in the world. When you applied an offset, um, obviously based on the scale as well, it would, it would mess up um, exactly where the entity was in relation to its physical dimensions in the universe. So by ignoring them, it pretty much fixed every single entity that existed in the store and the core content and, and everything else. We may bring it back, but not as off X, Y, and Z because there are entities, old legacy entities out there that will have erroneous values in here and it will mess up the physics system. So if we, if people do want it back, please let us know and we'll give it some new fields and then you can actually offset, but this time in cooperation with the physics system. Then you've got rot X, Y, and Z. That's basically the start rotation of an entity so you can actually give your entity a starting rotation so if normally a ladder is laying flat on the floor and you actually want it to be facing upwards when you first drop the ladder in you just set rotation x to 90 so that's what it means rotation x rotation y and rotation z default static again that describes its starting behavior if it's zero it will default to dynamic which means it's like um a crate and if it's default to static, so if you set that to 1, then it would default to static. So I'll give you an example of what that looks like in Game Guru. I'll switch to Game Guru and start a new level. No, we won't because we've already got some pretty cool stuff. Uh, as you may know, I'll just zoom in a bit, dynamic entities glow green. And you drop them down, so these guys are all dynamic which can be proved later if I went into test game. But if we pick something uh, clearly static, like a building, then it would highlight as red. So you see, that one's red and that one's green. And so that's what I mean by initial state. When you first drag them in from this side of the screen into the level, that's dynamic, so default static is zero, and that's static because it's... Uh, it's um, a default static one now you noticed it was sort of pink and then red and pink and then red that's because buildings are extra uh, buildings also have a flag which says that they auto flatten and what I mean by that is if I had a little hill say here and then I brought in a building the purple means not only is it static but it's auto flat so what happens to that hill it basically flattens it out so the building can commence and so the, the, the building doesn't fall over. Um, but you can actually switch that off. I could do a hill like so. But then I can press the U key and it will go to regular red and then it won't flatten. It will just plonk it down. And for those that don't know, static is a fast geometry that never moves during the game. Dynamic are things that do move during the game. So... If I actually put all them belt barrels on a hill, then I press test game, they'd all roll down the hill. So they can move during the game, and that's the difference between the two. So I'm going to switch back to our FPE, which is here. Okay, and we'll carry on from uh, default static, which hopefully I've covered, which is great. Um, yeah, uh, material index. Uh, mysterious numbers, let's call it. Uh, zero is generic. One is stone. Two is um, metal. And three, sorry, two is wood and three is metal. So because the barrel is a metal barrel, material index is three. There is a full list of all these values 
in a document in the docs folder so I can show you that when we jump back to the files earlier you'll see a docs folder in fact I'll show you it now no time like the present that's what they say so go to files and go back to again guru notice the docs folder here inside here is a couple of very helpful documents in both doc and PDF format and the one you'll be interested in is importing models into game guru gives you a full description of all these fpe properties especially the ones that use numbers to denote different modes and it gets really interesting when you start looking at the collision mode which has about 2099 modes and i ain't exaggerating but we'll get back to our notepad and move on to the next group called statistics and we have something called strength which it's probably the wrong word actually it was it was put down a long time ago it could have been better if we called it health so health equals 25 essentially it's the starting health of an entity so if you have something that's very strong you put like a thousand something that's very weak you put one in but the thing about strength is that it's the starting strength so you could restore an entity back to full strength because you're storing its strength value so you can imagine an entity when it's running in the game has two values strength it remembers as its starting value and health which you can change during the game but any time you want you can reimpose its original full strength which is from the strength value onto the health value but for you and i that's just how strong the entity is if it's weak and then an explosion goes off and it's set to explodable it will explode which is why you can see here the barrel's pretty strong at 25 it's also marked as explodable so when something else goes off in the near, in the dist um, near distance and it hits this with some damage and that damage is greater than 25 this barrel will explode similarly if you're shooting melons at the barrel you're not going to do much damage to it so it's 25 damage um, will last a very long time you could throw 25 melons at it without it blowing up but the 26th melon that's on the assumption a melon gun only does one point of damage it will then blow up but you fire something like a shotgun at it which can deal a great deal of damage the barrel could blow up immediately so that's really the purpose of that explodable and notice it's twice so even expert programmers like me can sometimes slip up in situations like this where a field happens twice inside an fpe the person will always take the last value that is to say it will set explodable to zero but then carry on oh and it finds it again explodable and it sets it to one so whatever the last value is that's the one it sets in truth it should really look like that we don't need that redundant um, duplicate of the field but look, we're skipping one. We're skipping debris shape. And it's quite fine to skip debris shape because this, again, is a legacy field. It's not implemented. We're going to keep it, though, because debris shape has a great possible future feature, which is when the entity does decide to fall apart, explode, disintegrate, whatever it is, this value will control how it will fragment. What are its properties? If it's wood, it would splinter. If it's um, metal, it would warp and twist and rip. If it's stone, it would crumble. If it was made of straw, it would go poof. So, so we're going to have some values that denote that. Little bit of hard coding, but we're going to allow you to change all the graphics and textures, sound effects and other particle effects within the effect in previous generations we may have hard coded all that and you just got a very strict set of debris shapes that you could trigger but that's not really a good long-term solution but we're, so we're going to keep it pretty open so instead of a number which would be a sum of preset we could perhaps even do a field um, with a string entry so you could point it to your own sort of debris assets so you can pretty much create anything you want but right now we can ignore it it doesn't do anything whether it's one zero or a thousand it doesn't do anything for now so you're quite happy to ignore that uh, as of um, August 2015 explodable pretty self-explanatory set it to zero the entity just disappears when it uh, has no more health if you set it to one boom 
a tr uh, an explosion is triggered that not only covers the disappearance of the entity, which is a really nice effect, but it causes spherical damage around it. So you will damage other objects within the vicinity of the explosion. So pretty cool for chain reactions and stuff like that. And in order to demonstrate, I'm going to be real risky and actually run that right now. So if we go to Game Guru again, uh, this is a very quick demonstration. In fact, we already have the map, don't we? All we need to do, drop in a start marker, give our start marker a shotgun, something really powerful, and give ourselves lots of bullets. And so we don't die instantly, we give ourselves 10, no, let's give ourselves 100,000 health. So I'm going to run that. And providing it doesn't initialize the physics too aggressively, I should be able to show you the barrels rolling down the hill because they are dynamic. So it's on our left. There it is. And I'm going to demonstrate blowing these barrels up without trying to kill myself. Yikes. And those are explosions. I'll see a little particle as well. Um, there's lots of clever things in here that you could even trigger with the... Uh, the FPE, but we may run out of time before I can show you those pearls. So that's a demonstration of explodable equals one. I'll switch us back to Notepad and go through the last few. Um, some more things you can ignore. This is the AI section. Ignore AI innate and AI destroy. These are leg legacy throwbacks. We may introduce them again because there were certain advantages to having separate scripts for initializations and destructions instead of actually copying your initialization step into one script. But right now, the only thing taken is AI main. And it will take whatever the script is. Now, you notice that you could shoot a barrel and it explodes, and it's all very intelligent. That's just because of that field. That's very clever. What you can actually do is have more sophisticated behaviors. So you can have a barrel that, when shot, runs away. Um, or disappears and appears somewhere else. You can do whatever you want. And that's lower. And we've covered that in previous broadcasts. And if you want, I can cover it in more detail in future broadcasts. But that's where you would set the script that controls the clever, complicated behavior if you want entities to do clever and wonderful things. And the last three fields you can also ignore. But again, they're a legacy throwback. We may introduce them if people want to see... Um, entities that you drag into your game which will immediately start spawning activities. For example, you could, uh, I'll give you a practical example, I'll show you in the game Guru Editor. Let's say I were to choose, try and find a mushroom, so if I go to foliage, do I have any mushrooms? Uh, no mushrooms. Alright, let's, let's pick this lovely little purple plant here and uh, zoom in. You see, you could actually have an entity um, that had spawning capabilities. So you would actually plonk one down, and then when you play the game, uh, because you've got spawn every such and such, it would create another version itself, and another version of itself. And because there's properties for controlling how fast it spawns and stuff, let's say you attach a script, which when you collect this plant, you get 50 health. And then two seconds later, it grows back. So you can get another 50 health. So that's the spawn feature, and that's something that we can bring back as part of the built-in FPE. And again, that wouldn't be um, Lua scripting. That's just clever behaviors, clever logic built into the core of the engine and accessible just through the properties. And to give you a bit of confidence, you don't have to use these crazy notepad things. You can go to properties and you will notice a lot of these fields are similar to the ones that you saw in the FPE, for example. Look, explodable, no, yes. That's the equivalent to zero and one. So they actually expose themselves, not all of them, but some of them expose themselves through the entity properties as well. And anything that you can see in this properties field that isn't in the FPE have been decided for automatically, they're defaults. But nearly all of these can be overridden within the FPE. It's just that when the FPE doesn't have these values, the engine says, ah, well, I know what the default value should be for this value, and it adds it for you. So the FP is quite powerful. You can actually set any of these to anything you want to completely customize your entity. So I'll let you look at that for a second whilst I look at the uh, thread. What I didn't mention at the start is we're going for a new uh, shortened broadcast thing just so we can actually get 
um, more of these done more frequently rather than it being a whole hour auto recording day which is very very valuable so I'm just going to see if there's any question marks because I asked uh, Ravi Poos to check any questions and answer them if he can uh, which would be great um, but I want to see if there's anything, any request that you want to see in the, in the last five minutes of this broadcast. I do apologise if you if you wanted an hour, but we figured a 30 minute one would just be a little bit more digestible and you can get on with your lives after reading it. So I'll start at the top. Uh, confirmation from the Nathan FK that it's great at his end. I'm, gr I'm glad the broadcast is working. Um, and now grabbing lunch. So thanks for the confirmation. Lot of stutters and buffers. Um, but it's getting better, so hopefully you can hear me even now. And Sikramesh has lost me completely. She's great, or not so great. <clears throat> Drugged Kooky Monster says hello. Will it be possible to pick up the debris like gathering resources? Great idea, yeah. You could pick up sort of the fragments of some large building and pick up a rock and then bash somebody over the head with it. Yes. Um, my original plan was that the debris would be in effect. So you could dump it on the GPU and run it real fast. But there are uh, arguments for the fact that they should be physical objects, which means they're going to be deterministic within the physical simulation. If they're moving about and they have those kind of entities, then, yeah, why not be able to pick up? So maybe in addition to what kind of debris it is, give it a value to say whether it's something you can use. Maybe a resource value, and you can collect those resources, and then a lower script can say what you want to do with those resources. So keep that idea alive when we actually do the debris stuff. Um, throw that away and we'll build it in as we're coding it. So you actually get uh, two for the price of one. Uh, Drugged Cookie Monster says, whoa, thank you very much. <laughs> and we've got one at the end. I am rubbish at lower. So I like the property panels. Everybody likes the property panels. And we're going to expand them as well. Uh, right now, they're a little bit unuser friendly. you got to get through the properties menu. Then you've got to click apply changes when you're finished. The actual purpose of the values isn't entirely clear all the time. And there's just not enough space to enter them. So we're, we're looking for ways in which we can improve that. And hopefully we're going to get some feedback when we get closer to it. And what I mean by that is, is when it happens to get to the top of the list on the voting board. And then we sweep away all the distractions and debris on our plate and we start sketching out the ultimate UI for editing entity properties. Um, but it sounds like uh, there are not really a huge amount of questions, which means I'm doing a great job. I do apologise for the stuttering. Internet's been, been a little bit slow today, so we'll have to watch for that in future.